Hi, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC and today I want to talk to you about a women's specific gravel bike from Specialised. So, women's specific gravel is an actual thing. Spech aren't the only ones to do it either. So Trek do the women's checkpoint, Scott do and Speedster and all of those, th those bikes have one thing in common, that their geometry is identical to the men's bike, just gets women's specific parts added. So that means before you close this video, if you're a guy and thinking of buying a Diverge E5 Comp, then this review is going to be useful for you too. It's exactly the same as the men's bike, just the bars are narrower and the saddles for women's bums. So Specialised designed a Diverge around open road geometry, which is, they say, an adapted road version of modern trail bike geometry. So the figures don't stack up against trail bikes. So before you think this is going to be some kind of drop barred aggressive hardtail, it's not. The geometry is about bang on for gravel bikes, albeit not as long as some. And so that seems to stem from short chain stays on this Diverge. They're 419 mil on this 52 centimetre bike, which is pretty short. So rather than a sort of trail bike, the Diverge is really an adapted endurance road bike with geometry much closer to the women's Ruby and the Crux cyclocross bikes. This is the top spec alloy women's bike from the Diverge range for the UK and it costs 1500 quid. In terms of gear, this Diverge E5 Comp gets a Shimano 105 11 speed drivetrain, so that's 11 34 tooth cassette with a 48 32 tooth chainring, um, which is a setup I found a little steep for some pinches. And as you might expect, the two by gearing gets a little upset by lots of mud. For the most part though, it's pretty reliable. And given the fact that this bike is designed to be used both on and off the road, the gearing's a good option, ensuring you have just about enough gears off-road, but plenty of them on road too. It's worth saying that my Road CC buddy, Dave, reviewed the £1,000 Diverge, which has 1132 tooth cassette, and found that gearing perfectly reasonable. So it's just down to personal choice, riding style. Stopping comes way of Tetro Spire mechanical disc brakes, which is a little disappointing given the 1500 quid you've just dropped on this bike. The brakes are either on or off, and while they do haul you up, there's very little feel. Here comes the rub though. There are other brands that offer better value for money and come with hydraulic disc brakes, but they don't get that future shock. So other hydraulic disc brake bikes on the market are the likes of the Kinesis G2, the Zonda Camino and the Vitus Substance. They're also all one by specific. So whilst they might be good at gravel, the one by drivetrain might make them less suitable for road rides and commuting, where it's possible that you're going to experience gaps in the gearing which messes with your cadence. So wheel-wise, the Special Diverge comes with Axis Elite disc wheels, which are paired with some rather roady Espoir Sport tyres. This bike has room for wider rubber, so the ones fitted are 700c by 30mm, but you can also fit up to 42mm tyres on 700c rims, or 650b times 45mm tyres. After taking the Diverge off-road for the first time with the Espoir Sport tyres, I quickly swapped them out for something novelier. I chose a pair of Schwalbe G1 Bike 40c tyres, which you can see on the bike here, and that did the trick to gain loads more grip off-road while still making relatively light work of the road too. The smooth tyres fitted to the bike as standard will be a great partner for commuting, but the lack of knobs make them a best for only hard pack fire road diversions if you take this bike off road. On to that future shock then that we mentioned earlier. This is basically a small suspension system inside the fork steerer. There's a cartridge inside the, steerer, the fork steerer which houses a progressive coil spring with 20mm of travel and that's there to take care of front end damping duties. It's a clever thing which is borrowed from the brand's endurance bikes and the general goal is to isolate the handlebars and hands from the bumps and vibrations of whatever track, road, trail or ever bumpy thing you're riding on. On the fire roads, the future shot goes some way to smooth out vibrations and takes the sting out of smaller holes and bumps. You'll still notice those holes but the feedback's less severe meaning you can maintain a direct path and have more traction. The spring doesn't dive either if you're braking or when riding out of the saddle. In fact, it's only overwhelmed when it's rammed into a deep puddle or a deep hole which has really steep sides, um, and then you'll get an audible clunk as the spring is completely compressed. That said though, impacts that big aren't designed to be smoothed out by the future shock. It's there just to deal with lessening fatigue and making the ride more comfortable, which it does really well. 
So I've been riding this Diverge for a few months. It's been a reliable and comfortable bike with which to explore newfound gravel tracks around the Forest of Dean and the Wye Valley. It's an accomplished commuter too. The aloe frame isn't glaringly harsh to ride and it's not too heavy either, weighing in at 9.5 kilos. The carbon fork up front helps curb the weight somewhat, what also keeps the front end stiff for precise cornering. Take the Diverge off-road and it will spin out for miles on the gravel. It climbs well and it's well mannered on the descents too. If you're used to riding mountain bikes, then the 71 degree head angle and the short chain stays and short wheelbase are going to come up as a bit of a surprise. But get down on the drops and the Diverge is a capable descender in gravel terms, especially with the confidence given by some fatter tyres. Those wider tyres also play dividends when taking the bike onto sloppier ground too, where the Diverge is fun to take out of its depth and play on the single track. It won't be the fastest you've ever ridden off-road, but it will be a barrel of laughs and the future shock will help cushion you from smaller impacts which makes the ride that much more predictable. In summary, the Diverge E5 Comp is a multi-talented bike. If you're looking for something that you can commute on in the week and then take bikepacking or gravel riding at the weekend, this bike could be right up your street, albeit you'll need a new set of tyres for the latter. It's not the best value bike, but it is one that's thoughtfully specced to adapt to plentiful road riding with added gravel, and you do get the added comfort from that future shock. If it were my money though, and adventure was high on my list of priorities, then the Diverge in this spec isn't the ideal partner. The two by drivetrain will get clogged with mud and the brakes are lacking feel, and it's hard to balance those shortcomings against the benefits of a future shock. I'd be tempted to splash 500 quid more and get the hydraulic disc brakes of the carbon frame of the women's Diverge, which is two grand. Then in time, upgrade to a one by drivetrain to replace the 10 speed Tiago of that bike. This Diverge E5 Comp makes sense if I were going to spend a majority of my time on the road and if I were to commute on it daily on rougher roads and dirty horrible tarmac, then it'd be a great team, team make. The 2 by drive chain would keep me spinning along and the brakes would do their job ad adequately, plus there's the added comfort of the future shock when you do take it off the beaten track. So for a full review, in words, head over to our website which is www.off.road.cc. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.